that. Okay. So one more time, you have to bear with me. Then to Matthew chapter 35. Okay. Okay. The Lord's coming in relation to the Gentiles. The Lord's coming in relation to the Jews we saw. Others. The Lord's coming in relation to Christendom, we can say. Now, in the three parables, there are those who are true, there are those who are false. It has nothing to do with the eternal security of the believer. But oh, it has to do between those who are true and those who only profess to belong to Christ. It's a difference between possession and confession. There are those who say with their lips, I belong to Christ, but they really are not. So it's a difference between the true and the false. The wheat at the says, you often find that. Well, I'm the lucky, I'll let you die. I want, I'll eat. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 35. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 35. Where the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the roads, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, a blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And it's a good study if you can make a study of before the foundation of the world and from the foundation of the world. I'll leave that to you. Verse 35. I was in hunger and he gave me food. I was thirsty and he gave me drink. I was a stranger and he took me in. Naked and he clothed me. I was sick and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came out. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee, sick, or in prison, and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Worldly I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall you say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared and the devil and the saint. For I was unhungered, and he gave me no food. I was thirsty, and he gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and he took me not in. Naked, and he clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and he visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when shall we be unhungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, did not minister unto me. Then shall the answer them say, Worldly I say unto you, 
Inasmuch as he did it not to one of the least of these, he did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous in the right he can. God will surely bless the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Oh, I think this up here, right? I'm going to help out with our own hold. We have to love more power, but I know. A loving father, may time be all revealing to us things to come. And before revealing to us the mystery of thy will, and in the dispensation, of the fullness of time, things in heaven, things on earth, will be headed up in Christ. And be thou loves thy son so much, thou hast given all things into his hand. And it is thy design that all men should honor the son even as they honor the path. And be that one day, in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. When the things in heaven, things on earth, things under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thank thee for helping us to believe on this name, to confess with our heart, Jesus Christ is Lord. Like Thomas, all of us can say, by thy grace, my Lord, and my God. Thank thee for the gift of the Holy Spirit. May not thy servant speak, but the Spirit of the Father would speak and glorify thy name. Thank thee for helping us from the beginning till now. Lord Jesus, thou art the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. In the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> First of all, I want you to notice the scene of this judgment. And the Son of Man shall come in his glory. A time will come when all the nations of this world will be encamping in the land of Israel. There will be the horses of the west in the valley of Armageddon. There will be the forces of the north in the valley of Jehoshaphat. The whole land of Israel will be surrounded by the armies of the world. And then it looks like Israel will cease to exist as a nation. Then it looks like Israel will be annihilated. At that time, the Lord Jesus will come. He will destroy the enemies at Armageddon with just a word. Turn to Revelation chapter 19. Sorry, man. I'll talk to all the awesome people to build it. Did I hide it on the end of verse 11? Revelation 19 and verse 11. In righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So first of all, he will make war. And uh, in Revelation 19 and verse 90, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him and sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast and the false prophet, verse 20, were cast alive 
into the lake of fire. And verse 21, And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the ark. His sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the pounds were filled with their flesh. So by his word, he will make war, and he will destroy his enemies. Some enemies, the Lord will strengthen Israel, and they will destroy them. You find that in Zechariah chapter 12, 13 and 14. After he makes war with the enemies, then we come to, we read, in righteousness he will judge, so he will sit as the judge. That's what we have in Matthew 26 and verse 31. So look at this scene. The Lord Jesus is sitting on the throne of his glory. Now he's sitting on the throne of grace. One day, sit on the throne of glory. And when the Lord Jesus will come, we will appear with him in glory. We will also be there. And the holy angel will also be there. And before them will be gathered all nations, and there will be, second thing, a separation. He will divide them as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goat. Now in verse 34, he will tell the sheep, Come me, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, flock the foundation of the world. The judgment of these nations is in the treatment they gave the Lord's brethren, the Jews. In the time of the tribulation period, the persecution of the Jews will be very severe. Many will be killed and they will be running here and there. And those Gentiles who gave shelter to them, took care of them, showed their faith in Christ. And they will be suitably rewarded. And those who did not do it, they will be punished. I want you to notice something interesting in verse 34 and verse 41. In verse 34, the sheep, the righteous one, the Lord says, Come ye, Blessed of my father. But notice in verse 41, he doesn't say, Cursed of my father. They themselves come under the curse. As many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. First Corinthians chapter 16, If anyone love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. Let him be anathema. We are blessed of the Father, the righteous are blessed of the Father, that these, they come themselves under the curse. And second thing I want you to notice, the kingdom is prepared from the foundation of the world. Now, it doesn't say, hell was prepared for these people. Hell was prepared, good verse 41, of the devil and his angels. God did not make hell for man. God made hell for the devil and his angels. And it's a very sad thing when man wants to go to hell. Even when God will put Satan to the lake of fire, God will lament. In Ezekiel chapter 28, Take a lamentation to the king of fire. And there you read about Satan. In Isaiah 40, Satan is pictured as the king of Babylon. He's behind all the religions. In Ezekiel 28, he's pictured as the king of fire. He is behind all the commerce of this world. And then Satan will be thrown. Son of man, take a lamentation. You know, God's heart will be filled with sorrow. 
even when he put Satan to hell. He was the highest creature God made. The most beautiful creature. Full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. God made him as a man, as a person with joy. The workmanship of thy tablet was created in you. He was very happy, joyful. The most beautiful creature God made. Oh, God has to throw him to the lake of fire. God will not. How much more when he will throw his creatures into the everlasting fire. Of oh, oh course. You have the sea. You have the separation. You have the surprise. The righteous will say, Lord, when did we see the hungry? When did we see the thirsty? When did we see the sick? And the Lord said, as much as you have done to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. So let us also try to do whatever we can to the brethren. We, now we are the Lord's brethren. Whatever we do for the Lord's people, we are doing it for Christ's sake. Now we come to the last mount, the mount of commission. Matthew chapter 28. Maybe one more point I will make. We should make a distinction between the three future judgments. Okay? The first is the judgment seat of Christ, which will take place in heaven. That is probably be well. Right. The Lord will come and take us to be with him. We will be raptured. That will be very wonderful. What a joy that will be. But the very next thing is, we will all appear at the judgment seat of Christ. And the Lord will examine us what we have done for us. And you know, the beautiful thing is this. Every man will shall have the praise of God. God will find in every child of us something in which he will praise him. Even a cup of cold water we will give, and Lord, we will not lose our reward. So that is the judgment seat of Christ in heaven, and it is only meant for believers. The second is the judgment of the living nations that is on earth, that is for believers and unbelievers. The third is the great white throne judgment that will be in space. And he sits there, heaven and earth will pass away, and that will be only for unbelievers. So distinguish the three judgments of the future. Okay, now we come to the Mount of Commission, the seventh mount. Matthew chapter 38, verse 16, to verse 20. And all had that Bible that. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. The marginal reading says, Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and know I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. This commission was given in Galilee. And Galilee was the place where the Lord Jesus grew up and where he did his mighty works. In Matthew 4 and verse 15, Galilee was a Galilee of the Gentiles. And this great commission to showcase all this. When Solomon was building his temple and his house, 
I am the king of Tyre. Gave him three cedar trees and also sent a carpenters to build. Also, wages for the king of Tyre, Solomon gave 20 cities, 20 I think it is, no? 20 or 30? Okay, I think 30 cities in Galilee. So, Hiram, the king of Tyre, came to see how those cities are. And he was not happy with those cities. He said, what is this city you gave me, my brother? He called it Kabul, which means dirty, not pleasing. These cities were good for nothing. And when Nathaniel came to know Jesus is from Nazareth, what did he say? That any good thing come out of Nazareth? So in this good for nothing place, in this lovely cities, the Lord did his wonderful works. The people who sat in darkness saw a great light. Those who sit in the region of the shadow of death, upon them the light sprang. And as we listened to everyone's testimony, we were good for nothing. We were the zeros of this world. We were dirty, useless, but God has done a wonderful work in our life. So it is in this Galilee the Lord is giving his great commission. It's a very important place because before the Lord Jesus died, he said like this in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 32. After I'm risen again, I go before you into Galilee. And the angels announced to the woman, Acts to them, Matthew 28 and verse 7, Arise, go quickly, and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall he see him, no, I have told you. And when they were going, the Lord Jesus met these women, and he said in verse 9, as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All day. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Your step. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. And so the eleven disciples came to Galilee. And they called for them in Verse 70, then they saw there is a twofold response. They, some, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Our proper force as we see the Lord, is to worship. Psalm 45, the bride is being addressed. Consider my Arkin and consider my daughter. So get your people and your father's house. Turn to Psalm 45. I'm forgetting. Psalm 45. And verse 10. Hearken, O daughter, and consider, incline thine ear. Forget also thy old people and thy father's house. So shall thy king greatly desire thy beauty. For he is thy Lord, and worship thou him. You know, when we become beautiful, then we listen to him. Hearken, O daughter, consider. When we meditate on him, then we forget our own people in Father's house, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth to those things which are before. Then the king will greatly desire our duty. He is thy Lord. Worship now. 
and Psalm 45, worshiping the king, isn't it? Thou art fairer than the children of men, grace is poured into thy lips, therefore God has blessed thee for us. That is how it should be every Lord's day. We should be worshiping them. In Matthew 2, the wise men saw the star, they rejoiced. When they saw the sun, they worshiped. So, some we worship him, but some doubt him. We call us doubting Thomas uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, that in the presence of Christ, all doubts disappear. My walk and my God. Now, in the original, there are four alls in this great commission. Okay? First of all, the all of his power. Second, go we therefore make disciples of all nations. The all of his parish. P A R I S H. John Wesley said, The world is my parish. The parish was, uh, you know, the, the chapel, the holy place where they used to gather. So the old world is our parish. The all of his parish. Thirdly, the all of his precepts, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I have commanded. The all of his precepts. P R E C E P D S. P R E C E P D S. Just for alliteration. Yeah. And fourthly, all of his presence. No, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Ask all of our power to be. All power is given unto me. The word of power is ex exousia. Okay, dear, don't worry. I don't know Greek, eh? and don't worry. Yeah. Exia, how you those who know Greek, can you help me? Exosia, okay, is that correct? Okay, that means all authority is given unto me. All authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. Authority means absolute freedom, absolute freedom of action. The Supreme person in India is the president. The president has freedom of action, but limitations. They can, he, she can only do what the cabinet you know, will recommend. Uh, all power is given to me. All authority is given to me. He has complete freedom of action to do what he wants. It was Nebuchadnezzar who said, He knew it according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. None can stay his hand or say unto thee, What doest thou? No one can question him. Our God is in the heavens, Psalm 150. He has done whatever he pleases. Psalm 190. All are his servants. All power. all power is given to me in heaven and earth. One brother was telling me a few days ago, BJP has muscle power. They have muscle power. They have machine power, the ballot box. And they have men power. But all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. So we don't have to be afraid of the vision. Uh, once Kriti Vergis in Ahmedabad, he went to a village to preach the gospel. And one man said, who gave you authority to come and preach here? He opened Matthew 28 and read, and read verse 18. All authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. And you know what the man said? Okay, you go and preach. <laughs> Doesn't happen every time. 
Det är All authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Go ye therefore. In John chapter 3 and verse 35, the Father loved the Son and given all things into his hands. As Peter chapter 3, our Lord has gone to the heaven, angels, authorities, and powers be made subject to death. He is the Lord of all. All authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Go ye therefore. And raise disciples of all nations. So we have the visa to go all over the world. Then, and always remember, we are the Lord's servants. I also went to Israel one day, but I didn't go as a tourist. Then I went to be a witness for them. I had packs with me. And those who were in the team, most of them were the Lord's servants only, and they were all afraid of me. This fellow will spoil our whole trip. <laughs> so I was more restricted. I was more restricted by our own people than by others. <laughs> and uh, our dear brother mentioned the Jewish people, you know, they hate the name of Christ. So once we were in this place, uh, in this uh, place where David's tomb was, they say, so it was a Saturday also, the Sabbath day, and uh, there was an old rabbi. Uh, when we went there, he and another rabbi were having some discussion. So when we went there, there was a man wearing it. An old man uh, with a long beard, and so some of our Lord's servants were asking him some questions on him. So after they went, I told him, You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that fellow got angry, Get out of here. <laughs> and I went and I got out. But before that, there were some books there, I managed to keep a track inside the book. And so we are to go, even if we go in his sand, or then go to any place as a tourist. Athens, all famous places, he went as a servant of Christ, as a witness for the Lord. Always remember that. Uh, we may go, you can go wherever you want, but always remember wherever you are, you are a servant of Christ. And the Lord once said, the Lord said, he shall be my witness, even to the uttermost out of the earth. And the most beautiful experience I experienced was in Israel was standing in the street of Nazareth. They, uh, uh, we all went to see uh, a place where they said the Lord was what? I came back a little early, standing in the street of Nazareth and distributing tracts. They all teached uh, there was no objection. And that was a very thrilling moment for me. Go we therefore make disciples of all nations. So in order to make disciples, first of all, that involves the preaching of the gospel. And when souls are saved, to make them disciples. Turn to Acts chapter 14. This is what the early church did. Acts chapter 14. Verse 31. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, that word taught in the marginal reading is he made many disciples. Okay, they be many disciples. They returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, consoling, strengthening the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. The 
primary meaning of the word disciple is a learner. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29, the Lord Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now, before the Lord teaches us, he first wants us to put our neck to his yoke. He first wants that we should surrender to him. Only then he will teach us. Turn to John chapter 13. I'm sure you know this. I'm good to remind you. Verse 13. John chapter 13, verse 13. You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. When we say Jesus Christ is Lord, we are saying, well, no man can say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. When we speak about his Lordship, when we exalt him, we are speaking well. You call me teacher and Lord. You say, well, so am I. Now, verse 14, the Lord reverses. What did he say? If I then your Lord and teacher. You got that? See, in the world, we make a person a teacher first. And if we like him, then we make him Lord. Am I right? That's how the world does. Teacher us, then Lord. But the Lord reverses the other. If I then your Lord and teacher, us, we must submit to his Lordship. We must put our neck to his yoke. Then he will teach us. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly. So disciple is first of all a learner. The moment we are saved, we are enrolled in the school of God. The triune God is our teacher. John chapter 6, the Lord Jesus said, Everyone who heard and learned of my Father cometh unto me. If we have come to Christ, it is because the Father has taught us who Christ is. When Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, what did the Lord Jesus say? Flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. It is because the Father hath taught us who Christ is. We came to Christ. And the Lord Jesus is our teacher, and the Holy Spirit is our teacher too. He will teach you all things and guide you into all truth. So, the teacher is Christ. The Bible is our text. Heaven and earth will pass away. My word will never pass away. This is the foundation of all the signs, all the history, all the geography. You get it in the end. The Bible is the textbook. And the church is our final Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Let's turn to that. Acts chapter 11, 26. Verse 25, Barnabas then to Tarsus to seek Saul. When he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. One whole year of Bible teaching. And what is the result? They were called Christians first in Antioch. The purpose of teaching is to make us like Christ. The purpose of the teaching is that Christ be formed in us to be conformed to the image of his son. 
that all down. So the disciple is first of all I learned. One day, one brother from England came, and I was in Bombay taking him to our home for uh, for a meal in the afternoon. And this brother was not happy with Bible school, a very strict brother. So as you were talking, I said, the best Bible school is St. Mary's Bible School. And he got more angry, and he said, where is that? So I said, Luke chapter 10. <laughs> and he was happy. <laughs> Though and thy feet, Lord Jesus, this is the place for me. Here I've learned deep lessons, truth that has sent me with. St. Mary's Bible School is too the best Bible school. Sitting at the Lord's feet and learning. The once a person is saved, and third, first, the disciple is a learner. Second, he's a follower. John chapter 8 and verse 31. If you continue in my word, then you will be my disciples. And you will know the truth. Truth will set you free. So disciple is a follower. Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And thirdly, disciple is an imitator. Matthew chapter 10 verse 25. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher. Let the aim of our life only be to be like my cloud. Now, first, to be in Christ. Second, to be like Christ. And third, to be with Christ forever. Like how Bolo actually replied to Monday in morning, Bill. Go we therefore make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, we have to baptize believers. Baptism is the outward expression of an inward work of God in this world. That is put our faith in Christ, we are God's children, God knows and we know whether we have believed or not, and others will know by the change in our life. That the public confession of baptism and the public confession of Christ is at baptism. Before the whole world and proclaim me, I belong to Christ. So when I go into the water, I'm telling the world I have died with Christ. And I'm under the water, I'm telling the world, I'm buried with Christ. You know what that means? That means, I'm telling, when you bury a person, you can't see that person. You won't see me anymore. And you come out of the water, in Galatians chapter 3, you are putting on Christ. As many as are baptized into Jesus Christ, have put on Christ. Now, you are seeing what dress I'm wearing. So when I come out of the water, I'm giving a confession, only Christ will be seen. Now, we each of us have to ask a question. When was I baptized? Have I been true to my testament? I was saved at the age of 11. I was baptized at the age of 15. And I don't think I've been true to the testimony I did. <laughs> At the age of 15, I gave a testimony. You won't see me anymore. I've been crucified with Christ, dying and buried. Only Christ will be seen. That means only his character, only his behavior, his meekness, his gentleness, his compassion, his love, his holiness. His righteousness, His grace, His truth. Only Thy should be seen. the confession with you. And may God help us to be true to the testimony we get. Baptize them in the name. What is it? A singular. That show, shows the unity of the God. 
baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I come under the protection and authority of the triune God. Our God is a triune God. In the margin of the Bible, I have written something about the Trinity. Very beautiful. A weak-minded boy who has never known to utter a rational sentence. Okay? And you should know. A weak-minded boy, a boy who didn't have, his brain was not functioning very well, never could speak a single rational, a good sentence. Why and only step back, he looked up and spoke these amazing words. I see, I see, what do I see? Three in one and one in three, and the one in the middle, he died for me. You can't be, say something better than that, isn't it? Ah, I'll repeat it again. Why on his deathbed, he looked up and spoke these amazing words. I see, I see. What do I see? You want to write like that. I see, I see. What do I see? Three in one and one in three. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, but one Jehovah. Three in one and one in three and one in the middle. Died for me. He died for me. And we cannot say that the man. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things. Whatever I have commanded you. Notice that word all. And the early disciples did that, isn't it? Acts chapter 2, 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching. The apostles taught them the word. So we have to teach God's people all. We have to teach them prophecy. We have to teach them typology. We have to teach them uh, practical things, doctrinal things, everything. Teaching them to observe all things, whatever I have come up. Some are specialists. You know, in this world, we have specialists. Uh, I specialist, uh, brain specialist. And in the word of God, also some are specialists. We have to be specialists. From Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21. Someone said like this David played in an instrument of 10 strings. We were playing in one string only. We got it? David played in an instrument of 10 strings. We were playing in one string only, teaching them to observe all things. We teach, but we have to teach. To observe on whatever I have come up with. At war, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And with the other all the all the hours. We have his presence. The cause of his presence. No, I am with you always. The constancy of his presence. I am with you always. That shows. Is the only present God. All hours given to me, omnipotence. No, I'm with you always, omnipresence. I'm here now. There are other believers in various places in Chennai, other states, other countries. And we all can say, just this very moment, the Lord is with me. Paul said, in my first defense, everyone was with me. No one stood by me, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. He can always count on, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. The Lord will never leave us, nor forsake us. 
Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, my rod and my staff, they come. One day I was going to Nellu uh, by car and uh, was driving in the highway. Artyo was following me, and I didn't know Artyo was following me, but I, I knew there was a car back of me for some time. And after that, the RTO overtook me, and the police said, you parked me on the side. So I parked on the side. The RTO car was in the front. I was there. One policeman came and said, bring your papers and come to the car. So I brought the papers and come to the car. The inspector had, took the papers in his hand. He did not look. And he asked me some questions. When did you come here? Where you are going? And so forth. I told him. And then he said, you are coming from such a long distance and uh, you don't have much luggage. How come? And you are alone. I told him, sir, I'm not alone. God is with me. He did not open the paper. He gave it back to me and said, continue your name. So without let us continue our journey. The Lord is with us. He never leave us, not forsake us. Moses told the Lord, If thy presence go not with us, don't carry a sense. And God said, My presence shall go with thee and give you rest. May God set his words to our hearts. <laughs> Thank you.